Welcome to Highline BI 348 class video number 67. Hey, if you want to download this file, BI 348 chapter 11 video 67 and follow along, click on the link below the video. Hey, we've been doing lots of simulation. And in this video, we want to look at an example for simulation where we have a binomial variable. Here's the situation. We have a company, Financial Freedom Firm. And the financial firm runs free seminars in hopes of generating new paying clients. Now, we know that the total cost for each seminar is 3000 bucks. The average first year commission, if someone from this seminar becomes a paying client, is 4500 The number of people who can attend the seminar, which is also the number of trials, is 35. We will define a success as a new customer. That means of the 35 attendees, if one of them becomes a new customer, that will be a single success. And then the probability of success of getting a new customer from the attendees for any particular one attendee is 0 0.065. Now, in order to build a simulation based on a binomial variable, we got to check the four tests to see whether this is a binomial experiment. Fixed number of trials, yep, 35 tries to get new customer. Only two outcomes for each trial, either a success or not success. Yes, they either become a new customer or they don't. Probability of success stays the same each time, yes, 0 0.065. And each trial is independent, we will assume yes. So we have one, two, three, four yeses. We're going to use a binomial random variable. Here's our defined variable. Number of successes, new customers in 35 tries, equals x. So x out of 35 with a probability for any one try of 0 0.065. There's our x. Now, we saw this a couple of videos ago when we talked about creating random variables. We're going to use the binom dot inverse function. The dists for our distribution functions always gives us probability. The inverse always gives us our x value. So tab. We need to know the number of trials. There it is, 35. Comma, the probability for success on any one of those trials, 0 0.065. Comma, and the alpha is the cumulative probability. And we're going to use our RAND function. That delivers a number between 0 and 1 with 15 digits. That will represent our cumulative probability. Now, cumulative probability for a binomial distribution means all the probability up to a given x. So if we said, what's the probability of 0 successes or 1 success or 2 success? If we added up all those probabilities, that would be the cumulative probability of x equals to 2. Now, we actually saw a great picture a couple videos ago of this distribution. But here, that will do it. Alpha is the cumulative probability. So when I control Enter, there's one random variable. If I hit the F9, there's another one. There's another one. So as I'm hitting the F9 key, I'm randomly generating a binomial variable with n equals 35 and p equals 0 0.065. Now, here's our math formula. Random variable, that's going to be that, times FYC, our first year commission, minus our TSE. That is the total seminar cost. All right, so let's come down here to our model area. And we're going to use data table and an empty cell, as we have done a number of times already in this chapter. Our formula to randomize is going to be, a, and I'm going to click on this cell. That's got our randomizing formula in there. Times, that's the number of new customers times the average amount per year minus the total cost for a seminar. Control Enter. So if I hit F9 here, right? Wow, so we have sometimes we have a profit. We get a loss. So we had zero, so we have the whole $3,000. As a loss. Now we're going to simulate this 10,000 times. So Control Enter, I'm going to put a 1 there. We're going to do our little trick. We're going to take our cursor and point to the fill handler. And when we see our crosshair, right click, drag down and back. And when the secret menu pops up, point to Series. I'm going to fill this series down a column, increments of 1, and I'm going to stop at 10,000. 
And when I click OK, there's my 10,000 values. Now I can highlight formula for our data table. Control Shift down arrow, Control Backspace to jump back to the active cell. Now we go up to data, over to data tools, what if data table, or the keyboard Alt D T. D for data, T for table. That's an easy one to remember. No row input. Column input, this is the trick we've been using in this chapter so far. This empty cell will have no influence whatsoever on that formula, but it will force data table to copy that formula down and get it to randomize. So when I click OK, boom, there we go. We can see sometimes we're going to have profits, sometimes we're going to have losses. Now we need to take all of these values, calculate some statistics for them, look at them, and make a decision. Is this marketing plan of spending 3000 bucks for a particular seminar, if we have a probability of 0.065 and 35 people attending, is it a good marketing plan? Now, in the past couple of videos, we've been using average, count, max, min, standard deviation. But you know, at some point when I do this all the time, I get tired of entering all these different functions. So we're going to look at this great function called aggregate. Now, actually, aggregate requires that you know which functions. And since I tend to do this a lot, I know average is 1, count is 2, max is 4, min is 5, standard deviation of the sample is 7, and there's a, and a bunch of other ones here. But watch this. I already put the numbers here, because I do this a lot. So I'm just going to say aggregate arrow to get my function number input, comma. And I have to tell it one of these options. We're just going to say ignore nothing, so for comma. And we're not using the array, the top one. That's for array calculations. We're using the bottom one reference, so I simply highlight. Control, Shift, Down Arrow, Control, Backspace. And that's it. That'll work all the way down calculating various statistics. Whoops, I almost forgot. I'm going to click on the reference to highlight the whole range and F4 to lock it. Control, Enter, and copy it down. So the mean is 7,000, count 10,000. Oh, I don't want to have that number formatting, so I'm going to control shift grave accent or tilde to remove all the formatting and revert back to general. The max is 37, the min is 3,000. Standard deviation, wow, that's a huge standard deviation. The probability of a loss equals count ifs. Highlight the whole range, control shift down arrow, control backspace, comma. I want less than 0, end double quote. Remember, count ifs requires that you have a comparative operator and a number as text. So we put it in double quotes like that. Close parentheses, divided by my count, control enter. OK, so the probability 0 0.09, about 10%. If I hit the F9 key to randomize, it doesn't look like that's changing very much. So just from this analysis here, if we're willing to assume that risk of a loss, a 10% loss, for an average profit per seminar of 7,000, then we're good to go. Now, of course, these are some individual statistics. We almost always want to build a frequency distribution and then a relative frequency distribution. So I've already put the upper limits for each one of our counting categories. And we're going to highlight one more cell. Then we have upper limits. And we're going to enter our frequency array function. So frequency, we need our data. Array, that's the entire column of simulated values. Control, Shift, Down Arrow, Control, Backspace, comma. And then I need upper limits for each one of these categories. Now remember, for each one, like this line right here, it's going to count everything from 6,000, but not including 6,000, up to and including 10,500. That will be the count right there. Close parentheses. This has to be entered as an array function, so we use the special keystroke, Control, Shift, and Enter. We immediately look up to the formula bar. If we see our curly brackets, we know Excel understood that that was entered as an array function. Come down here, Alt equals to add them up, 10,000, Control B. I'm going to copy this over. All right, so you ready? We're going to calculate a relative frequency. 
left arrow divided by left arrow, control down arrow to get down to that total F4 to lock it, control enter, double click and send it down. So we can see we have about a 10% chance of getting between 3,000 and 1,500. But there are our probabilities for 1,500 or more. Now, we've already analyzed this, but this is not the end of it. We can hit the F9 key to see this randomized. But we can also come up and change our static variables. So let's just say we overestimated the probability of success on any one try. Let's say it was 0.04. As soon as I enter that, that as a static variable comes through. The random variable still gets simulated 10,000 times. Our analysis statistics are here. And now we can see we have a slightly different picture, right? 24% chance of a loss. So with simulation and random variables and static variables, the random variable is automatically going to change from the model we built, but we're also totally allowed to change these and see how that ripples through our analysis. All right, in this video, we saw how to create a binomial random variable and build a simulation to look at a marketing plan. In our next video, we have two more simulation videos. In our next video, we'll actually see a construction project where you have to calculate the average time for a particular long-range project. All right, we'll see you next video.